So Kaylee and I just got back from Michigan. Uh, we're just in the process of cleaning out the bus right now. Just a few things uh, left to pick up, but we're almost all done. It was really a mess in here. We had four people sleeping in here for the uh, for the weekend, and we had a total of a group of seven people with us. There's some bullshit on here that's not coming off. What is it? Oh, but it's sticky and it's stuck right on here. Where is it? That? Yeah. You gotta use your nail. Ew, that's gonna get all underneath the nail. Yeah, so this comes off the counter. This shit is nasty. So one of the big issues we had on our trip is this seam. There's a bunch of food under there. So I guess I didn't put this drain in right. Because you can see there's still water in there. So this needs to be all the way flat. This lip needs to be all the way flat, so I think I need to just push it down more. There's a little screw right there, and I think I either need to tighten this up. I just need to figure it out, so I'm going to try to get this totally flat so we don't have this problem anymore, and I don't anger my beautiful girlfriend. I just want our home to be feeling like a home, nice and clean. So from our trip, what was the first big, big issue that we had? Um, I'd probably say the exhaust. Where? Up here. Um, but it was, yeah, it was pretty dang smelly. Yeah, so right when we started going, uh, we started smelling something that smelled really bad. It smelled, that smelled really smelly. It smelled smelly. <laughs> and, uh. We figured out that it was this hole, which is in the front of the bus. Um, this is something that I haven't gotten to yet. And the, all these holes here actually go all the way through to the engine. So there was exhaust coming through the engine and coming out of these, all these holes here. Um, so when we first started driving, we thought we, were in, we thought we were in some serious trouble and we thought something was wrong. Uh, but then we just figured out that it was really just, um, it, just some fumes coming from the engine. Um, so this is definitely something that we're going to have to fix uh, before we go. Uh, this originally was uh, on the door handle. Um, so right about here, right about here, there is a door handle. And it was for when someone was driving, they could open the door. Uh, but we didn't need that anymore, so we took that part out. But I didn't want to mess around with all these electronics. Some of these we still need, uh, especially uh, these are the... Um, lights on the roof of the bus that you need in order to pass inspection. This one is for this nice little fan right here. Uh, so we couldn't take this out. Uh, so I just mounted this right here, just screwing it into this frame. I think what I'm gonna have to do is take this out and put down, uh, first I'm gonna seal all of these holes and then put down a vapor barrier uh, just over this whole area. Just because we can't have, be having fumes coming in. Uh, we bought, right away we bought a carbon monoxide alarm. Um, just because we didn't want anything serious happening. And also when we're cooking with propane, it's just good, to, uh, good practice to have one of those in here. Yeah, this is gonna be one of the first things that we fix. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna fix this. I'm definitely going to uh, need to do some research to figure it out, but basically the idea is to seal these holes up and put uh, some type of rubber mat like this um, uh, over this area just to cover all that up. I would say... I would say... The biggest issue we definitely have. The biggest had. issue we definitely have. The biggest, the biggest of all the time. Of all the issues. Why are you making fun of me? I'm not. I'm just emphasizing what you need to say. But it was serious. It was a serious issue. What issue? The issue with the electrical. So, the electrical was let's, a serious let's issue. Let's Let's hear you try to explain the electrical issue. Ah, all, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, my dad owns an HVAC company, and he knows a lot about electricity. So. <laughs> So what does that mean about you? So I inherited a lot of knowledge of electrical okay. knowledge. Um, <laughs> so what was the issue with the electrical? All right, so basically we realized there was something wrong because um, it was the day that we used a blender, right? Yeah. So we used this friggin' blender and it's sitting over here. So we have an outlet right over here. Um, and so whenever we want to use the electricity from this, we have to turn this 
inverter on. Um, so basically that's hooked up to the solar panels. Um, so everything... Close. Well, hold on. So before the solar panels, there's the... Let me explain this. This is the sun. During the daytime, light is coming from the sun and is being absorbed by these solar panels. The solar panels are connected together in parallel with a negative wire and a positive wire. The solar panels convert the sunlight into electricity and send them to the solar charge controller or basically a small computer. So when the electricity comes through the solar panels to the solar charge controller, if there's room left in the, in the battery, the solar charge controller sends it there. If the battery is full, then the solar charge controller doesn't let any electricity go there because that's going to make this battery very dangerous. When Kaylee or I use electricity from the battery, it's pulled from the battery, goes into the solar charge controller, and then goes to the light bulb. This electrical configuration is a 12 volt system, which is different than the electricity you have in your house, which is 110 volts. In order to convert the electricity from 12 volts to 110 volts, Kaylee and I had to purchase an inverter. The inverter takes the 12 volt current and converts it into 110 volts. So we can plug in things like our laptops, our camera gear, appliances. The inverter needs to be hooked up directly to the battery. When Kaylee and I were in Michigan, we took our blender, plugged it into the inverter, turned it on, blasted the system with 700 watts, and blew out our fuse. So when we plugged in our blender and turned it on, we drew such a high amperage from the battery that it blew out the fuse before it could do damage to the inverter or the blender. Now the issue came after I replaced the fuse. I took the blown fuse out and put a new fuse in, went to turn the electricity back on, and was receiving high voltage warnings all over the place. Now I thought the issue was with the solar charge controller because the charge controller is the brain of the entire operation and controls the pressure within the system. After about four or five hours of working with the charge controller, I thought it was broken. I started to think back to replacing the fuse and I looked at the connection and this connection right here was loose. So I re-secured the wires to the fuse and the whole system worked perfectly. I'm not exactly sure why a bad connection would cause high voltage in the system. Some parts of electricity is still a mystery to me, but I'm happy that we could fix it. I'm happy that we had electricity for the rest of the weekend, and ultimately that we could keep making our smoothies each morning with our blender. So I've been getting a lot of questions about how much this bus conversion costs. So I'm gonna be putting out a video in a couple of days about how much the bus cost and all of the conversion materials. So you can look out for that by the end of the week. Uh, but that's the end of this video. Hope everyone has an awesome 4th of July.